but we've all heard the meme, if you grow it, they will come. Butterfly gardening has grown to be very popular. However, what many may not understand is when, where, and why butterfly gardening is productive and when, where, and why it is not productive. And that's kind of what I want to talk about. The driving point that I want to make here is that there is a great division in North America that I think many butterfly garden book authors overlook. And that division basically is none other than the continental divide. I'm going to spend it. I'm going to be spending a little bit time on this slide because I think it's important when examining butterflies on a continental level. From Canada south to Mexico, the continental divide creates a mountainous barrier between two vastly, greatly different physiogeographic regions of North America, basically east versus west. As such, there are significant differences between butterfly diversity and butterfly availability on either side with butterflies east of the continental divide tend to be incredibly more common, visible and available, especially to those in the suburbs who create butterfly gardens in the Midwest and Eastern North America than those west of the continental divide. This advantage is at the very heart of the popularity of butterfly gardening. Again, I wanna be clear that the opposite is true west of the continental divide where attracting a diversity of butterflies to a garden is by definition problematic. So the natural question to what I'm driving here is why? Why is there this disparity between suburban butterfly visibility east versus west in North America? As the Midwestern and Eastern US benefit from the existence of the Gulf of Mexico and the fact that the Atlantic Ocean is much warmer, some sources say as much as 16 degrees warmer than the Pacific Ocean at <clears throat> excuse me, the same latitude. This is true because much of the Atlantic Ocean seaboard is fed water um, from the Caribbean, so it's warmer. Whereas in the Pacific Ocean, the water streams or the water flows, if you will, in the ocean comes from near Alaska and it's much colder. This drives a well known phenomenon known as humidity. Now, humidity drives an abundance of vegetation which supports the boatload of butterflies, butterflies that can easily be attracted to a garden if the right host and nectar sources are planted. So we butterfly enthusiasts from the West can only be jealous of the benefits of the green forests and wonderful gardens and butterfly diversity that the uh, Midwest and Eastern North America benefits. Here's just a sampling of butterflies that many butterfly gardeners uh, can attract. Swallowtails and sulfurs, monarchs, viceroys, red spotted purples, and all sorts of butterflies that can be attracted to a garden. So I realized going to the West of the Continental Divide, I realized that a person Percentage-wise, only a handful of you live in Western North America. But I would like to discuss some viable options for you to compensate the lack of garden butterfly diversity that can be attracted to the suburbs. Before I do that, there are some exceptions in the Western US, and again, it goes back to water. Um, I, I don't think we have any IBBA members currently, I could be wrong, from Southeast Arizona. The Southeast Arizona, if you were to go to Tucson, say in June, there's not a lot of butterfly diversity there, but there are some species that are awakened and triggered to fly um, soon after the heavy monsoons that hit uh, Pinal, Pima, Maricopa County, Arizona, um, and that fly following the monsoons. So there's a lot of butterfly enthusiasts and butterfly lovers in say Tucson, Arizona, where there are very few in Las Vegas, Nevada, because the monsoons don't benefit Las Vegas, nor its uh, vegetation as it does in Southeast Arizona. So um, there's also a lot of Mexican species that will blow up following the monsoon season and migrate into Southeast Arizona. Also uh, in this picture, I've got some green on the California coast, Oregon coast. There is some slight raise in humidity along the California coastal areas where you can actually attract monarchs, gulf frits, and anti swallowtails to gardens. But once you go inland, where it becomes more arid, then our problem of Western North America tends to persist. Again, it's all about water. So the truth of the matter is, in order to understand how to raise Western species, if you live out West, is to understand where those butterflies can be found. And that can be broken down into five subcategories. Um, their habitat includes mountain canyons, mountain hilltops, valley rivers, wetlands, and the fifth, which is not natural, agricultural farms, which are you know, fed with irrigation water. That irrigation water still 
uh, can grow alfalfa and other weeds that uh, attract several different species of butterflies. So the problem with this is more often than not, these natural western butterfly habitats are nowhere near your garden. They're nowhere, if you live in a city, if you live in a suburb, uh, if the butterflies are breeding in canyons on mountain hilltops, you may be dozens of miles away from where they're actually breeding, which is our problem here in Salt Lake City. We have some people who have heard about the successful butterfly gardens of the Midwest and back east and have read those books and have bought into that rhetoric and are frustrated, quite frankly, at the lack of butterfly diversity, even though when they grow the correct nectar sources and host plants, in my own garden, my own yard, I have attracted a, occasionally monarchs, gray hair streaks, West Coast ladies, pain ladies, clouded sulfurs, you know, the butterflies that you see in this slide, but not consistently. And I do have a lot of nectar sources and host plants because I use them for raising. As a matter of fact, the most consistent butterfly that is adapted to suburbia in the Western US is the cabbage white. Because cabbage, cabbage whites love suburban weeds. Uh, they use mustards like white top, dyer's road, and other weedy mustards as host plants, and use dandelions, butterfly bush, and other plants as the nectar source. All of this is ironic because there is an amazing diversity, even I think more so if you go to Butterflies of America and look at all the species and subspecies west of the continental divide because of all the mountain ranges and speciation in terms of number of taxa. There's actually more west of the divide than east. They're just far, far more invisible. Uh, this slide itself just shows butterflies that I have studied in Utah. These are, all, these are Utah specific. And I've had to learn the life histories of those butterflies and how to raise them by traveling uh, into their habitats. 